I want to give you a few tips on how to skim journal articles. And this is crucial. Everybody has to be able to skim an article. This isn't just like cutting corners or something. And that's simply because you need to take a look at so many articles to then narrow it down to the ones that you want in your paper that it just wouldn't be possible or feasible to read every article from front to back, right? So first thing is, absolutely first thing is you read the title and you read the keywords. These keywords tell you the, the way that the article is categorized, right? So if you're searching online and you type in one of these keywords, the, the odds of this article showing up are much higher. So the title and the keywords are, are really similar in that way. So this article, her support, his support, money, masculinity, and marital infidelity. Keywords, infidelity, relationship instability, breadwinning, economic dependency, and the dependency dependence effect, right? So there's a theory in there. Second, you read the abstract. And remember that the abstract it's not just like a quick overview. I mean, it is, but think of the four main parts of the article, lit review, methods, results, and discussion. There's going to be a sentence or two for all four of those parts in the abstract. So, you know, I look in here, she, she writes, recent years have seen great interest in relationship between relative earnings and marital outcomes. Um, so that's kind of lit review. She talks about where she gets her data. That's kind of methods. Uh, she talks about theories um, that say, you know, the, the more income you have, you're more likely to cheat. Um, but she says there's other literature that says something else. She looks at her data. So she set up a little puzzle there and she finds that, um, oh, for men, if you, you're the breadwinner, it does increase infidelity. But for women, it doesn't. Um, and that if men are economically dependent, they're even more likely to cheat. Right? So there's this gender difference. Um, and then she goes on to explain why she thinks that's the case. And so you basically, you see the parts, right? You see lit review, methods, results, and discussion, like the implications, all just in the abstract. So quite frankly, I may not even need to read anything else to be able to cite this article, or at least to know that it's good enough for my paper. It depends on how core it is to the paper I'm writing. But say I have a sentence in my paper that's something like, uh, you know, uh, economic factors in family life influence marital outcomes. And then I want to cite something. I could definitely cite this, uh, you know, month 2015, right there in that sentence. Uh, and I don't even re need to read more to know that it supports that kind of a, of a statement, right? Now, and, and that's important to do. The reason I say that you may not need to read more is because sometimes uh, there may be an article you want that's behind, behind a paywall and all the information you can get is the title, the abstract, and the keywords, which are almost always available even if you don't have access to the rest of the article. Uh, and so don't always let that stop you from citing an article if you think it's really relevant. Now, beyond those, uh, let's go down and, and take a peek at some additional uh, material in the article. So we scroll down and the next thing I would look for are the headings of each section, right? So uh, almost like you can ignore all the words and think of this as just an outline of headings. So you have all these different headings um, and if there's a graph or chart that's really easy to understand, pay attention to it. But if the graph or chart is difficult to understand, ignore it for now. And then the, very, the next thing is this section, the discussion and conclusions. I would read that section because that's where they usually uh, recap the core things that they, the author found and covered um, and give you sort of the, the important takeaways. And so that's the second phase is, is, you know, look at the opening sentence or two or paragraph in the introduction. So, you know, right down in here, there's probably some hook or interesting thing. And then look at the titles, any really easy to understand tables or figures and the discussion section. And then that's sort of your second level reading, right? So if you have access to the whole article and you want to go a little deeper into it, a third level reading, then you, I really only save for a few rare articles. And that's when they're really core to the argument of my, of my paper. Maybe I'm arguing against that person, or maybe I'm uh, building my core paper off of it. It's maybe it's what uh, I call an, uh, an anchor article, right? Just this core piece that helped kind of frame my own paper. Now, in that case, I might read it very closely. I might try to make sure I understand all the terms and methodological things, um, some of which I may not immediately know at first glance. So think of those three kind of levels of reading. 
There's the title keyword abstract reading, where you may not even need access to the whole article. And that's sometimes fine to cite, cite the article. Then there's that second level where you add the, the intro, uh, the key headings, easy to understand figures and tables, and the discussion at the end. And then there's a more deep reading where you read everything and you try to make sure you understand all the terms. So don't do the deep reading on everything. You'll spend way too much time and not get far enough. And of course, if it's a core article, an anchor article that you're building off of, don't just do the quick skim because you're gonna maybe miss some important detail and it'll be embarrassing later. But do make use of these different tiers of reading based on your purposes. A lot of articles will need the top skim, a few will need that mid-level, and only, only a very few will need that deep read.